Swinburne College is named after Mr. George Swinburne, the person responsible for the founding of the college in 1908, although it was then known as the Eastern Suburbs Technical College. The connection between the Swinburne family and the college which bears its name has continued since 1908. Miss Gwen Swinburne, daughter of George Swinburne, founder of the college, will talk to us today about her experiences and about the family's association with the college. Miss Swinburne, your father, George Swinburne, was deeply committed to education. Can you tell us something about his own career as an engineer which might have generated this commitment? Well, he belonged to an engineering firm. He had his full qualification as an engineer. But um, he was really entrusted with the administration and organisation uh, more than the practical supervision of engineering. Although one of the most important things in his life was while he was uh, getting his experience as an engineer with a firm in the Midlands, he was sent over to Vienna when he was only um, 22, uh, with 21 workmen to put up the uh, gas works in Vienna. And he had an extraordinary experience then. And he's written a full description about it. He was uh, had an introduction to the minister of the Wesleyan um, Protestant Mission in Vienna, but they were under police supervision and uh, it's most uh, particular about what they said and when they said it. But he made a great success even at that age of um, organising this group of workmen to put up the works in Vienna. And he took the opportunity of travelling considerably before he got home. He did that, as it were, a kind of adjunct to his work with his uncle in London as a gas works engineer. His uncle was John Coates, who went to London to, uh, to um, increase the gas works there, and then came out to Melbourne. And uh, he came out to Melbourne in 1885 to uh, uh, erect gas works and take charge of the gas supply in Melbourne and he wanted my father to come with him and he wouldn't come at first but uh, Melbourne was so busy at that time in the early 80s in the height of the boom that uh, John Coates sent for my father and after that soon for his brother and they came out and formed Coates and Company gas engineer and hydraulic engineers 99 Queen Street and uh, there actually was gas connected for Melbourne and John Coates set his sights on uh, Australia, Victoria and Australia. Mm -hmm. And it was during this period that your father was developing very strong ideas about the relation of education to industry. Uh, oh, oh yes, well he was a young man making his way. I mean all through the 80s for instance, he was uh, a young man with Coates and Company uh, making his way and establishing himself. But um, he had found out that the engineering experience, which he really had explored and got for himself, was the basis of his career. Mm -hmm. And he was always extremely interested in reading and in everything that happened. And uh, actually, all, when they found that uh, there was gas supply already in Melbourne, as I say, they set their sights through the colony, and Australia. He was interested in gas works from Fremantle to Cairns. In fact, when, when his uncle, who was already in Melbourne, when they arranged his passage to come, he booked his passage to Brisbane because a few weeks after he arrived in Melbourne, he was up in Brisbane and negotiated a, um, a, a Negotiation with Charters Towers, or a contract with Charters Towers for the gas works there, and soon they were up at Cairns. And um, it was some time later in his life, when he became Minister for Agriculture, mm -hmm. that he was able to implement some of his innovative ideas about education. Oh yes, and um, well, they were practical. You see, he knew what was needed. And uh, he was fortunate, it was through the gas that he first 
came in contact with Thomas Spent of Brighton. But uh, uh, he was always interested in, in education, and I mean, we had a big, a good library at home, and he used to get the good magazines. Uh, he kept up his German by getting a weekly magazine called the Fliegende Blitter, which I think means sort of um, passing gossip. But this German magazine came into our home for as long ago as I can remember. And how, how did your father originally become involved with technical education? Oh, only when he found the need for... When, when, uh, uh, see, his, his first interest was in the boy. You know, he wrote a book about technical education and he called it the boy in industry. And when he found what, uh, largely from his own experience, what the boys needed. And he'd, when he'd finished one or two big uh, terms in cabinet positions as a water supply in the agriculture, and uh, he thought he would turn his attention to doing something locally for Hawthorne. And uh, what, what could he do for the boys? And what are your, uh, some of your memories about his early involvement with uh, Swinburne College, which of course was uh, formerly known as the Eastern Suburbs oh, Technical yes. College. Oh, uh, no, the first thing I remember is uh, it, it must have been the opening, I think, because it wasn't a rainy day. The foundation of stone was raining, but I remember going with mother and father to, to the opening and seeing the original building. But what were uh, your father's ideas about uh, the college, about what it should uh, do for the, the community? Well, it was to give the opportunity to the young people to improve themselves and to be able to move up through whatever industry they were, they were involved in, set a high standard, and, uh, and occupy their minds with them, give them an enthusiasm and interest for life. And I believe it wasn't just the young boys that he was concerned about. There were, uh, the, the college uh, catered for uh, young women as well. Oh well, uh, in, in due course, <coughs> they say it had a few young women in the art department among all the blacksmiths and plumbers and people, but we very soon got the domestic economy and uh, that was a great success and the uh, government used the uh, kitchens to send up children classes from the Manager Road State School certain mornings a week and cooperated with the government I cooperated with the uh, state schools in every possible way to get the girls in. But they had millinery classes, making hats, and um, sewing classes too. And uh, <coughs> as I say, they, it wasn't a full domestic economy course for a while, but uh, oh yes, the. Uh, I, th I, I think his interest in, uh, in girls was, was confined to what was considered right for them now. I don't think he had a girl blacksmith or anything like that. But I mean, he, he just wanted to provide for whatever was um, suitable and right and best for, for the people to do, to give, to give them incentive and interest. And of course, Swinburne College was not just a personal project of his, it was a family, very much a, a Swinburne family project. Well, family and community. Mm -hmm. And had a wonderful group of friends. I mean, like mm -hmm. oh, I've mentioned before, Sir William McPherson and Hubert Hamer and Dick Hone, and uh, that was a little later after the war. See, the mm -hmm. war, the war into the First World War interrupted uh, a lot of the community development through mm -hmm. it. But it soon came back after that. Yes.